Yo, what's up guys? You're back with your man, Tech Nick, your go-to guy for videos on the latest tech. Now today, it really is all about the latest tech because everyone has marked their calendars down for this day, the 8th of March, 2019, for Samsung's 10th iteration of their S lineup, a decade of S phones, and I can't say how excited I am to unbox the S10 Plus. There are two other versions that you get, the regular S10 with a 6.1 inch AMOLED screen, and the S10e, which is the cheaper of the bunch, still with the same internals. You don't have the Infinity O display that is curved, and that comes with a 5.8 inch display, and this is a 6.4 inch display, the same that you see on the Galaxy Note 9. Now, I am more of a Note enthusiast myself, so this is going to have to do until the Note 10 drops near the end of this year in fall, uh, but I'm really amped to see what's in this phone and what's in the box, and it's just, I cannot tell you how excited I have been to open this guy up. And I've left it here for you guys so I could share this moment with you guys and to give you my initial thoughts on what I think of the S10 Plus and if it is actually a worthy upgrade for you guys coming from an S8 or an S9 or even a Note 9. It just released a couple months back. Uh, but anyway, it has pretty much every feature that you could think of under the sun when it comes to smartphones. A smartphone hardware enthusiast, this is their dream period. Guys, I'm here to unbox this for you and without further ado, let's go. So opening up the box, the first thing that you see is the phone, which is not usually what you see when you first open a Samsung box. Uh, you usually see the cover over here, but after watching a couple of videos, I realized that they've actually tucked it away here. Now this may look a little different to other S10s and S10 Pluses around there, but this is the Hong Kong variant. So bear in mind that this may be a little different and what comes in the box may be slightly different to what you get in the US and in the UK. I'm really happy that Samsung have included a hard case here. These are my preferred cases. It just shows off the design of the S range a lot nicer than the soft cases that kind of pick up dirt after a while. Yeah, this is a 15 watt charging block. So it is not any higher than the previous generation S9, S9 Plus and the Note 9. In the box is the little OTG adapter so that you can pop a USB straight into the USB type C port. The type C charging cable. And like I said, you're gonna get USB 3.1 data transfer data transfer files from your S10 and S10 Plus, which has been the case for a while now, so that on your PC, transferring files between your PC and your phone will go breezy, unlike other Chinese manufacturing cell phone companies which don't have that included at all they just stick to usb 2.0 samsung have always and i mean always they have never not included a pair of earphones whether they have ditched the earphone jack or not they have not just by the way one of the few companies that actually have not but even the companies that still have headphones headphone jacks don't include earphones not all of them do and samsung not only includes wide earphones with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack they include classy ones from akg something that's it's just worth mentioning it's just it's the kind of quality that you get from what is samsung there's the buds they look pretty great i really like how they made it white because of the white phone and of course we have this wonderful braided cable so they really do give you some high quality goodies in the box for sure Oh wow, this is, this power button is really high up. I mean, I've got pretty big hands, but this is a really high up power button. Why they did not match this height with the big speed button down here, I have no idea, but I guess you can double tap to wake, so there's always that. So now here is the back, this prism white. And I have the eight gig, 128 gig variant, so I don't have the ceramic white here, but I do have this white, which is actually protected by Gorilla Glass 5, which is awesome, just like the Xiaomi. And there, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but like reflecting lights off my PC kind of give it a different kind of look. It's almost like a classy, pearly kind of look. And when you look around the sides here, we obviously have the power button, which I mentioned before, which is extremely high up there. This is a 7.8 millimeter thick phone. Uh, the Xiaomi Mi 9, which I recently did a couple videos for and I have my review coming out for, you better check that out, so stay tuned for that. That is 7.6 millimeters thick and I already said that is extremely thin. Uh, so this isn't too much thicker. At the top here, we of course have the SIM card 
slot over here and not only does it support dual sims it actually supports micro sds up to 512 gigs of sd card support which is great to see in a phone you don't even see sd cards supported in phones these days on the left we have the volume rocker and we of course have the bixby button which thankfully can now be remapped to another app though unfortunately it cannot be remapped to another AI assistant or say Google assistant, for example. At the bottom, we have a single firing speaker. It pretty much looks the same as what you would see on the S9 and S9 Plus. We have the headphone jack there, which is always a nice plus. And then of course we have the USB type C port and the single firing speaker down there, which is then paired with the stereo speaker at the top here. Now on the front, we have a 6.4 inch AMOLED 1440p display, uh, which can be downscaled to 1080p if you'd like. Uh, and then of course we have this wonderful Samsung Infinity O display is what they call it. We have these curves on the side which actually feel a lot less prominent than previous devices. They kind of curve and then slope directly down instead of like making this long curve. So it actually feels a little more premium. And I guess the curves won't get in the way and maybe it'll be a bit better for your palms as well. But we have two lenses at the top here and talking about these two lenses, we have a 10 megapixel and an eight megapixel depth sensor. So that's one of the first, well, definitely a first for Samsung, one of the first phones with this feature on as well, other than previous phones from last year. Uh, of course, the Mate 20, Pro being one of them. And at the back, we now have three sensors, another first for Samsung. The first sensor that we have is, well, the two of the sensors are actually exactly the same sensors that you see on the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. One of them is a 12 megapixel telephoto lens. And the other one is 12 megapixel variant aperture main wide lens. And now they have added a 16 megapixel ultra wide lens for those zoomed out shots. So it should take pretty similar pictures to the S9 and S9 Plus and of course the Note 9 as well. But now you have that whole factor of widening the shot, which is always great to see on a phone. I'm pretty sure it is just a matter of time until all phones have that feature. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead now and set up the phone. But before we do that, I just wanna mention that the bezels on this phone are actually really slim. The top bezel is pretty much the slimmest I've ever seen. There's almost no bezel on the sides thanks to the curves. And at the bottom, it is one of the tiniest I've seen though. It would have been nice to go all the way down, but then you would have to bend your LED display back like iPhone does and that rockets up the price. But now I wanna add a fingerprint for you guys, not just because I do it every time I have an unboxing video, but this is actually the first time and the first for any phone to have an ultrasonic sound waved fingerprint sensor. So what it does is it actually uses vibrations to go through the phone's display to kind of pick up the different depths of your fingerprints, uh, which is a lot better than the regular optical ones that you see in phones such as the Xiaomi uh, Mi 9 and the OnePlus 60 and the Mate 20 Pro and so on. Um, so this is said to be a lot more effective, a lot more efficient, a lot safer, but it is a tad slower. What ultrasonic practically does is if you have water on your fingers, you're, you're busy eating some crisps, uh, maybe your hands are a bit dirty, maybe they're a bit muddy, it picks up the depths of your fingerprint. So it doesn't necessarily need to see it as a picture. It kind of, it's it's almost like the difference between facial recognition and 3D facial mapping that the iPhone XS has. Wow, look at that display. Now this is a thousand 215 nits. This is the brightest phone in the world to date. And there is it, there it is on full brightness. I mean, my camera is struggling to keep up with this brightness and this tone is killing me. So I'm gonna put that on mute for you guys. But this brightness, I mean, just look at this display, the colors, it's just, I know they've knocked the saturation down a bit, which is actually going in the right direction. I'm really happy with that. Sorry if the background just dimmed a bit there. It's just because of how bright the screen is. So let's turn that brightness down a little for you guys, just to be a little easier on your eyes there. Uh, and I just wanna go ahead and unlock the phone with the fingerprint. For the first time, I'll be unlocking a phone with an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor. Okay, there it is. And it's in. It's not the fastest I've seen, but let's see, accuracy and what have you. Just put my finger, oh, and we're in again. I really like that animation. I'm really happy with it. I mean, the speed actually isn't too slow with what other reviewers have been saying. I think it's pretty on par, and knowing that my finger's gonna work every time 
far outweighs the speed of it, even if it's just by a millisecond slower. It is flat as anything. These, there's barely a camera bump at all. I'm not sure if you guys watched my Mi 9 video, but that camera bump on that phone is absolutely massive, though it is a bit of a thinner phone, but there is absolutely no wobble on this phone whatsoever. I'm really excited to give this phone a true run for its money in a full breakdown of my review. And before we wrap this up, guys, I did promise you I'd clip this cover on for you guys. So let's go ahead and pop this on and see what it looks like. Remember, we do have Gorilla Glass 5 at the back, so I'm not worried about scratches. And we have Gorilla Glass 6 in the front. Of course, you get a ceramic back with the 512 gig variants, but this is only the 128 gig variants. Look at that. I mean, that is just so much nicer than a silicon case. So there you guys have it, the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. Now this is the 8 gig, 128 gig variant, actually the bottom of the range one. You can opt for the 512 gig version as well, which has a wonderful white ceramic back, which definitely makes it a bit heavier. I'm really digging this prism white over here. It kind of gives it like a pearly look. It's really classy, I'm really enjoying it. The thickness of the phone is, it actually feels a lot smaller than my Note 9. I'll be sure to compare this to the Note 9 and, and give you guys my thoughts on which phone I actually think is better since I've been using the Note 9 as my daily driver since it dropped. The screen looks phenomenal. These two lenses in the front look epic. It's waterproof. It has micro SD card support of up to 500 gigs. There is a headphone jack over there. Um, it has wireless charging, 15 watt wireless charging, 4,100 milliampere battery. It has 15 watt wide charging. So the wired and wireless charging haven't really increased actually at all. Uh, but there now is nine watt reverse wireless charging. So pop a pair of your new Samsung buds on, buds on the top and throw on your Galaxy watch as well. And until my few, full review comes out, I'll definitely be doing some charge tests on this guy. I'll be doing some battery drain tests. So stay tuned on my channel for more on the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. And until next time, guys, this is Technic.